they shouldn't be late, though, should they? Tell Mavis, she's doing them. I mean, what's the point of having a news agent when your own papers don't come? Democracy is that. Anyway, what's going to be in them that's so special? I just wanted to see what the papers made of that crazy meeting that Ken Barlow and his mob had the other night. That was a carry-on, wasn't it, eh? Well, don't make yourself late waiting, will you? Got that new lad starting this morning. I know, I know, I know. Oh, you sound as if you wish he weren't. Well, it's only faffing about, isn't it? Somebody fresh. I mean, by the time you've told them what to do, you might just as well have done the job yourself. Well, I should have thought you'd have been glad of a bit of company. I'll give it a whirl, eh? It's a bit like getting wed, though, isn't it, eh? You've got to wait a week or two before you find out whether you've done the right thing or not. And then when you do, it's too late. I know the feeling exactly. Papers have come. Anyway, I can always give him the boot if he doesn't come up to expectations, can I? Easier said than done. Eh? Well, I mean, even if somebody doesn't come up to expectations, you often can't quite find it in yourself to get shut of them. At least that's my experience. All right. Here, catch. <laughs> Here, I want you to take notice of this. What? I'm early for once, and probably I've got three minutes in hand. <laughs> well, knock it off your way. They'd better not. See, you oh, smoked it too. Rat. Hey, hey. Hello. Weatherfield 8825. Well, I'm not sure you can. Will you just hang on a minute? Thank you. It's for Sleeping Beauty. It was late when I heard her come in. Susie! Cool. Must be something to do with a clear conscience. Oh, I think it's more to do with sleeping pills myself. <laughs> hey, look, you go, Elsie. I can take a message. Ah, oh, you're a good girl. Oh, papers come, Billy, for once. Hello? No, this isn't Susie. She's still asleep. Paper. You... Yeah, could you just hang on a minute while I find a pen? I see. I'm off. Turn off, Elsie. Now. Right, pen. Right. What's the message, please? Nice bike, that. You race it, do you? Yeah. Oh, I'm not as fast as the bike. Uh, uh, uh. It's someone I've never done that bike racing. You can borrow it if you want to try. You'd have to be all downhill. <laughs> oh, God. Are you any good at cleaning up? Well, uh... You can have a go at this place. The last time it was cleaned up was about 1978, so it's about due, isn't it? Just my luck to choose the wrong year to start. Hello! Hey, and the first tip you get, mate, get out of here sharpish because there's always somebody who wants something. I remember. Hey, thank goodness I've caught you, Ken. And what can we do for you today, Vera? Oh, I was here then. Is it working for you then? That's a general idea, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, a bit of advice, kid. Next time you're out on a job and you look around, he's on a bunk, I'll tell you where he'll be. He'll be at Rover's Return, Public Bar, end of Coronation Street. I remember <laughs> that as well. Is that all you've called for? Uh, what main thing, yeah. But listen, can you have a look at my system? What's the matter with it? Well, it's like leaking, you know, there's water coming through in the corner, you know. Well, we can't do anything today. We can have a look at it, see what's wanted. Well, if you want mine, Glenn. Uh, but listen, can I leave my key and I'll collect it on my way home tonight? Yeah, fine, yeah. Oh, thanks, love. Now, you'll catch it, won't you? You see this key, don't you? It'll get you into anywhere, kid. It will. And come to think of it, my husband's on nights this <laughs> week. <laughs> Look, you can't even tell when he's blushing, can you? It's a good job with you around, isn't it? I know, I make myself blush sometimes, Ken. Anyway, listen, I've spent enough time out already. Uh, you'll get me shot, you know. Keep me talking like this. Ta-ra, Ta Hey, look, we've got some plumbing to do in Earl Street first, and then we'll go and have a look at her precious sister, eh? Right. By the way, that's uh, Vera Duckworth, if you're at all interested. She's a lot like my mum, really. Well, say what you like. I don't think that'll just you any harm. I don't know that it does us a great deal of good. Yeah. Trouble over disco plans. Trouble, yeah. That's all they're interested in. I mean, look at that picture. It's more like a rugby scrum than a meeting. <laughs> Morning. 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 Hello, love. That's his list, love, and that's exact money. Right. Thanks. And there's more in there on those two kids who threw that brick than there is on what was said at the meeting. Oh, give up. Oh, why is this that uh, protest do we had? Yeah. I heard they were a Barney. Yeah, they are, you see? Yeah, I've been at worst. Bloody council meetings and that, I have. Well, Elsie said she enjoyed it. I was sorry I didn't go, but I thought it just would be people making speeches and that. Oh, happened. well, at least we brought enjoyment to somebody. I suppose that's an achievement. Oh, I think you achieved a bit more than that, Ken. Do you honestly think we did enough to stop it? Oh, I don't know, Ken. Let's just say, if anybody was laying odds, I wouldn't know which side to put my money on. Hi. Hiya. Are we having any dinner, then? 
what I'm not. You suit yourself what you have. Hey, have you not seen this? What? The message I took for you. No? Terry's got your address. Sorry, Kim. It was before I went to work. You were still in bed, so I said I could take a message. You had no right, did you? Hey! If someone wants to speak to me, it's me they want to speak to. Oh, he did shout to you. But you didn't shout loud enough, did you? You are stupid. Now, just hang on a minute. What time was this? What time did Kim ring here? Look, I'm not going to be talked to like this, Susie. I thought I was doing you a favour taking a message, but never again. Oh, no. I said, what time? Half eight. Oh, my God, that's hours. Only you were still asleep. So I thought I'd be helpful and take a message. But I don't see why that makes me stupid. I don't. So when you're ready to apologise, Susie, I'll be ready to listen. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, Mrs. Olsen, no. this is you. Go on. Well, I mean, we're getting on with the round OK. I mean, me doing upstairs, Stanley doing downstairs. Like. Do you know, I've heard of specialisation. Well, he must be the only window cleaner in the world who has to keep one foot on the floor. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, you see, well, there isn't enough money for the servers. Not really, there is. No, well, there can't be, can there? Oh, oh hiya. That girl, I'll swing for her one of these days. Hey? You try and do her a good turn and get called all sorts for it. What, Susie Birchall? Yeah. Oh, I knew it. Oh, you two aren't at it again, are you? I'm not. No, it's her that thinks she owns so, the place and everybody yeah. in it. Well, she always did. I've had to teach her her manners a time or two myself. Give us half a lager, will you, Betty? That look. I mean, the way she does. Mm. I'm going to have it out with her, I am. Well, quite right. The only thing she respects is a right mouthful. Um, Eddie, that today is going to have a deco. Yeah, be my guest. Oh, right. 29 pence, please, love. Sorry, Are you in another? Yeah, why not? Uh, a large whiskey, please, Harry, and another pint. Oh, this is great. This. I mean, 99% of people reading this would think it was all our fault. Hey, listen to this. Trouble over disco plans. Local opposition plans to convert an unused warehouse into a disco and wine bar came to a head this week at a protest meeting. Uh, frayed tempers led to several heated exchanges and the meeting ended in disorder with arguments continuing as people left. One pound eighty, please. Oh, tough. Strength of feeling can be judged by the fact that a brick had earlier been thrown through a nearby factory window. The factory was owned by a Mr. Michael Baldwin, a member of the consortium behind the Disco and Wine Bar project. That's great, isn't it, eh? Great. All publicity, I would have thought. Oh, yes, yeah, some of it, yeah, but I mean, bricks through windows, arguments, we can do without that sort of thing. Thanks, mate. Some of us would agree only too readily that we could do without the whole thing. Oh, it's all a storm in a teacup anyway, isn't it? I mean, it'll all be forgotten by tomorrow. I think it'll still go through. Listen, if I was a Betty man and I'd had money on you from the start, Mike, there's nothing in that paper that makes me want to switch now. Really? I said I'm used to having a drip in my bedroom. I don't want in my bathroom as well. Oh. Yeah, well, Bert used to be very angry at that sort of thing. Yeah, well, Jack's used to us. He always has been. Well, you've got them pair for up and have a look at it, haven't you? Yeah, but I'll have to pay for him, won't I? I mean, who these plumbers charge? And he's got a young lad working with him now, with his time and all. Has he set somebody up? Yeah, black lad, a nice lad. A bit quiet, you know. And yeah, where's Elsie? I thought she said she was going to join us. But why? I just am that. Well, where are you going? I'm not sure. Hey, Susie. What? Look, I know you're going to tell me to mind my own business, and I'm not your mother, and all that sort right. of thing. But I just can't stand here and say that when suddenly, for no unexpected reason, you decide you can't wait to get out of here. Look, I know I can't stop you. I wouldn't want to anyway. But I would have thought if. If out had cropped up, if if you're in trouble of any sort, well, I well I thought at least you might have wanted to tell me. Marion took that this morning. Well, somebody had to take it. You weren't stirring. Terry's got your address. Is this what this is all about? Is it? Yes. Go on. Terry's this bloke I knew in London. And? Well, I suppose I was a bit keen on him for a while. Well, we got on all right. And then? And then we didn't. So I left him. But he wouldn't stay left. He just kept following me around, finding out everywhere I was. So in the end, I, I just left London. That's why I came back here. I see. Well, I thought that'd be the end of it. At least he wouldn't follow me up here. Well, who says he's going to? Oh, that says... Well, all that says is that Terry's got hold of your address. I rang Kim. It was her that rang here this morning. She was a girlfriend of mine. And? And she said that Terry had been to her place. 
just shows what kind of a creep he is. He just grabbed her diary, went through it, she found my name and this address. Oh, it's a long way to come, Lon. Elsie, you don't know him. It's the sort of daft thing he would do, just get in his car and come up here. He could be on his way now. All right, steady on. Elsie, I'm frightened of him. I am. And there is no way I'm going to stop here and wait for him to knock on that door. <laughs> On there, mate. It's dinner time. I brought some sandwiches. Did you? You know that's the difference between you and me. I'm married, and no one makes me out. You're not fed up with the job yet, then? Give us a chance. I mean, we don't go poking round drains every day, you know. No, it, it was interesting. I enjoyed it. You what? Well, you're not supposed to enjoy it. You're just uh, supposed to get on with it. I tell you what, we'll have a brew, shall we? Mm. I'll slake me thirst before I go down to the rovers to have a pint while you're cleaning up here. Right, Mr. Fairclough. So what do you expect to get out of this job? Well, I'll get a job for one thing, and then, if I stick it, well, like you said, I'd have learned a trade, won't I? And then what? You'll go off and start up in business on your own, will you? Dunno. I've got an uncle who says you never get rich working with somebody else, but that's his excuse for never working at all. What's in your butties, then? Cheese. Do you want one? Yeah, why not? And then I suppose you're going to learn all you can from me. Then you're going to kick me into touch and start up on your own, eh? Well, I might find you a bit of a job sweeping up if you were desperate. Yeah. Then you'll get married. You're going to have a lot of kids and carry on the whole ridiculous system forever. I haven't thought about that. Hey. Hey, when did I get married? I don't know. No, but I'm supposed to, aren't I? And I'll tell you something, I've forgotten the flipping wedding anniversary. Yeah? Yes, and she let me forget, didn't she? She didn't say a dicky bird. Hey, you're no good at getting anniversary presents, are you? No. No! You're my flipping apprentice, aren't you? What's the good of me having you and doing all the dirty work myself? Are you sure you're under no obligation to him? What do you mean? Well, you don't owe him money or out like that. No. I see. Just won't take no for an answer, eh? He doesn't know the meaning of the word. What's that? Oh, come on. He just couldn't walk straight in like that, could he? See? Now, I've come for an apology and I'm not leaving here until I get one. Oh, what's all this again? I'm sorry, Elsie, in your house and all, but I don't have to take being called stupid by her. I mean, all I was trying to do was to be helpful and take a message. Ah, yes. Well, that message that you took, it wasn't as straightforward as it looked. Look. I am sorry. Whatever I said, I'm sorry, all right? Can I tell her? If you like. Well, that message that you took... Yeah. Well, it's this fella she met in London. It, it seems he's trying to follow her down here. I came and she was packing her bags to go. You don't want him to find you? Is that it? That's it, exactly. But what can he do, I mean? <laughs> well, he can't make you go, can he? Not with Elsie well, in the that's what I keep trying to tell her. I mean, do you think we just sit here and let him? But you might not always be here. Well, we'll have to make sure that we are, won't we? Yeah. I mean, you might get sick of the sight of us, love, but nobody will get any nearer to you than us. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Look, kid, odds on he won't show. But if he does, it'll probably be all for the best. Get it cleared up once and for all. You can't go running around the country looking backwards over your shoulder all the time. I mean, how long do you think you can keep that game up? OK, I'll stop and see what happens. Oh. And we'll be here to make sure enough does happen. Thank you, love. Good hour, love. Ah. Right. Hello, love. Ah, here we are. And the sewing room order this afternoon is... It's three custard tarts, four eggless cakes, two almond slices, a packet of ginger biscuits, a bag of sugar, oh, and a banana for me, and can I pay you later? How the heck do you remember all that? I have to keep saying it to myself coming across the road. <laughs> hey, I tell you what, though, there can't be that many firms that send a supervisor out for a snap. Oh, I send myself. Listen, it's a walk and a bit of fresh air, isn't it? Oh, yes, and dearie, I know there was something I'm going to sell up. You can tell your Ken that I think he's absolutely right about this disco. I've read that article in paper. I mean, what do we want with a palaver like that, eh? Crack, it's caused enough fuss. I mean, they haven't even started it yet, have they? That's one of your constituents speaking. And it's one of his best customers and all. Yeah, well, I've had my say. I can see good and bad in all of it. But you can't please all the people all the time, can you? Well, some folk try. Two almond slices, Yes, please, love. 
No, I tell you what, there's a lot against it at work. Well, them that live round here anyway. In fact, majority's against it. Well, Ken will be very pleased to hear that. Thanks very much. Don't look, I'm not here, right? A uh, packet of fags, Alf, please. What do you think you're doing? Like I said, I'm not here. Look, I've run out of fags and there's no way I can last over there till half past five without. Pound of fork was up at top. Thanks. Well, you look to be here to me, Vera. And you look to be here to Mr Baldwin and all if he catches you. But he won't, will he? Look, I've been beamed over here in a different dimension. Right, beam us up, I dare. She's puddled that one, I swear she is. <laughs> I tell you, it's harder work with two than it is with one. Oh, he did turn up then, your new mate. Oh, I was there before me. How was he? Oh, keen, eager to learn. Well, that can't be bad, can it? Oh, he's a bit of a bind, though, you know. He keeps asking questions. Oh, and do you have to answer them? Yeah. No wonder you're tired. What's for tea, then? Funny you should mention that. Why? Well, I was wondering if you'd like to take me out for a meal tonight. Why would I want to do that? Well, let's see. Could be because that's the only way you're going to get out to eat tonight. Or could be to make up for the fact you've forgotten our wedding anniversary. <laughs> it's a big laugh to you, isn't it? Well, you're going to pay for it tonight, no mistake. Uh, happy anniversary. Oh, you remembered all the time. Well, I didn't want to embarrass you. and I knew that you'd forgotten. Oh, we're as daft as one another, aren't we? <laughs> Come here. You like it, though? I do. It's lovely. I tell you what, so I can wear it tonight. Oh, no, here we go. I've got to take you out again. I'm no, just listen, so that you can show listen, it off. I know listen. going to the My treat. You what? I'll pay. You mean I can eat all I want, mm -hmm. drink all I want, mm -hmm. and you're picking up the tab? Yep. You're on. Right. Thank you. Here we are. Did you say where she was going? No, I just think she wanted to get out of the house, that's all. You know, go walk about. Yeah. Still, it's been a nice afternoon, thank goodness. But it's worse than working in a fish shop is a flower shop when it's cold, you know. We can't have any heating. Mm, I'll get that. I saw the flowers go off. Do you know, that's something I never thought of. Hello, Miss Susie, you know, I'm Terry Grubby. Oh, you just heard me. Elsie, it's him. What? That Terry Susie was going on about. Sit down, I'll see to it. And uh, what can we do for you? I'm sorry to disturb you. I hope I haven't called it an awkward time. Oh, were you looking for Susie Virtual? Yes. Yes, well, I'm afraid any time would be an awkward time. Ah, I have got the right address then. Oh, yes, you've got the right address. Just one thing, Susie isn't in. And for another, even if she were, I don't think she'd want to see you. Oh, dear. Only I've come a long way, you see. I've been on the road since two. Mm, seems like you've wasted your time, doesn't it? It does. Oh, come on in. Well, I don't want to be any trouble. You won't be. Sit yourself down. Oh, thanks. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, I'm dying for one, tell you the truth. Well, now that you're here, you might as well stop till Susie comes back. Say your little piece. I'd be very grateful. Oh, thanks. There's just one thing, and I'm telling you straight. Yeah? If Susie doesn't want to talk, no argument. You go on your way, quietly. Oh, of course. Right. Sugar? No, thanks. Hello. What are you two doled up for? I'm taking him out to celebrate our wedding anniversary. What he's trying to say is that we usually look like a couple of old tramps. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. What I'm saying is that one of you usually looks like a couple of tramps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's you having? Well, I'll have a pint for that. And I'll have a vodka tonic, please. A uh, vodka and tonic and a pint, please. Okay, my love. Well, then, how many years is it? Six. Really? Yeah. Well, you both look very well on it, I must say. <laughs> now, you must have these drinks on me. Oh, that's oh, kind yeah. of Thank you, Mrs. Walden. And what Very about kind. you, Mr. Walden? Can I get another one for you to complete the round? Do you know me, Mrs. Walker? I'm not even married. Please. Well, then, I think, although you might be the least deserving, you might be the most in need. <laughs> I can't deny that. <laughs> Anniversary. Why don't you crack on these yours? Maybe we'll all get a drink, then. We would any road if they'd got out about them. Now, next big one we've got coming up, Sus Rudy. 
for us for 40 years. You've not been married for 40 years, have you? Oh, no. No, not for a year or two yet. But I were very young when I were wed, you know. Oh, I knew now. I was as green as grass when I fell over Stan's legs in the black house. You still got a bit of time, as you say, but for the string of rubies. Two bottle of ruby wine, more like. <laughs> It's a long time now, isn't it? Well, if me and Marion will ever get to that. You? You're not getting it, are you? Why? Well, you don't get any anniversaries if you don't get yourself wed first. So it's not today, then? Well, not from what I've just heard, no. I mean, the actual anniversary was a few days ago. They've only just started to remember it. <laughs> well, I don't suppose we can ask them to pay for the drinks now, can Ooh. we? <laughs> good night, then. Oh, good night, love. Good night, Mr. Good night, there you are, you see. If there was a discotheque at the end of the road, you'd have somewhere to go after, wouldn't you? Oh, don't you worry about us. We'll be all right, don't you worry. Right, oh, see yeah. you then. Bye. Evening. Oh, I see the press was on your side. Oh, I don't think there aren't anybody's, were they? No, they made it sound like bad news. Never mind it was your lot that were doing all the shouting and throwing the odd brick. I didn't write it. No, you could have made a much better job if you had them. What do you want? A grapefruit and uh, that, yeah. Well, the way it read in paper, that the whole idea had been nothing but trouble from start to finish. Uh, let's That's hope the council right. don't get the same idea, for all our sakes. Yeah. I'll tell you someone else at all. What? If that job doesn't come through, young Mr. Valentine will be serving a lot shorter apprenticeship than he bargained for. Oh, then you wouldn't sack him, would you? I wouldn't have any choice. Are you working? Sales rep. Polishes, cleaning fluids, that sort of thing. I have other plans, though. I mean, uh, that's just for the meantime. You stay there. I'll see to this. Susie. Hiya. Look, it's all right. Don't worry, but he's here. Oh, God, Elsie. No, it's all right. Look, I told you I don't want to see I'm him. It's all right, Susie. I tell you. Oh, you're clever, aren't you? I only want us to talk. Can't be any harm in that, can there? I've heard all that before. Well, let's face it. We can't carry on like this, can we? No, we can't, because there's nothing to carry on about. I have told you I don't want to see you, I don't want to talk to you. You can't just say that. I've just said it. Oh, come on. Now, look, you. Remember what I told you when I told you you could stay? She can't just refuse to talk to me. Well, I think she can. Yeah. Look, I'm going. I'll be back when he's out this house. No, it's him that's going. I'll tell you why she can't refuse to talk to me, shall I? No. Because she's my wife. That's why. We're married. And she's my wife. Coronation Street's on Sunday at 3 with the Omnibus and then back on Monday at 9. And after the break, we're off to Emmerdale.